So this keyword right here is the DJ Osmos Pocket 3. And I want to go over why I think this could be the best camera of 2024. Hey, what's going on everyone? Hope you're doing all right. My name is Matt and this is Dwight Creatives. And today we're going to go over my six-ish, seven-month review on this camera right here, which again is the DJI Osmos Pocket 3. Now with this review, I do want to say that this is going to be more on the video side. I don't use this at all to take photos. So if you're looking for that, apologize ahead of time. For me, when I'm taking photos, I'm using my Canon or my Fuji camera for that. But let's just go ahead and dive into this. Now I want to say right from the beginning, if you're looking at this camera, 100% consider the combo kit. It is well worth it. The microphone alone is worth adding that in there. My advice would be to just go ahead and get the creator pop up. Now I'm gonna be going over my experience with this. So if you're looking for specs, I'm not really gonna be doing that specifically. There's plenty of videos out there that will go over that. My first pro with this is definitely gonna be the size of this. And I wanna compare this to my iPhone. This is the 12 Max Pro, I believe. And look, it is less than half the size of this. For me, I'll throw this into my sling bag for my everyday carry, or I was recently up at Boston, and I just threw this into my bag. That's opposed to bringing a DSLR or a mirrorless, plus a few lenses. This takes up maybe like two batteries worth compared to those. So definitely in terms of weight and space, definitely the way to go. So a slight con to that weight, it is super, super light. And for me, it's almost too light. Sometimes when I'm trying to pan and film something, I can't really do that as well. The gimbal does help stabilize it, but I can still see like a little handshake. And what I do is I'll go ahead and that tilt to the cage. And if I want a little bit more real estate, I'll go ahead and throw like the little tripod in there just so that I can get a really firm grip and it has a little weight to it so that I can really get those school of movements that I'm looking for. Pro tip right there, the tilted cage with the base that comes in the greater combo. Uh, also, I just do want to mention that I'll be leaving affiliate links to these below. And I also made a video on my most used accessories updated for 2024. So I'll leave a link to that. All those affiliate links will call us new extra to you, but they do help support the channel. So if you do use them, I greatly appreciate it. Going back to the compact size of this and traveling with it. When you get the creative combo, you get this, which is the DJI Mic 2. And this pairs perfectly with your DJI Osmos Pocket 3. And for me, I've been using this majority of the time for my audio. It's super clean. It works really well. It's paired, so you don't have to worry about trying to line everything up in post. This is a load is worth getting the creator combo to get this added into it. Also, if you want, you can go ahead and pair this to your phone. It does work with a few other Bluetooth devices. I've used this with my iPhone and also my Android phone. Let's talk about the gimbal, right? If you're out vlogging and you're trying to film yourself as you're walking, it does a great job with that. And as I said, for a kind of slow hand movement, it does a really good Good job with that too. Recently for July 4th, I was up in Boston. Of course, fireworks, the place I was at, we do it on the 3rd instead of the 4th. So walking down there, I was trying to film the fireworks as we were walking up to the beach. And as you can see, it does a really good job in stabilizing as you're walking. Now combining that with features like the slow-mo aspect, you can get some really nice buttery smooth slow-mos. I'll throw in a few fireworks in here, keeping in that kind of scenery. Using this in a low light mode, I think it did really well because we were walking around, I had a flashlight for my feet to kind of see where we were going. So it was pretty dark besides for the fires and also the fireworks. For me, this is something that I would use for my workload. In terms of video modes, I shoot most of mine at 4K24. I've also been using this a little bit on completely automatic settings and I found that it is pretty accurate and definitely usable for you. If you really don't want to dive too deeply into that whole editing, you just want to cut yourself together. One little note that I will mention, you can only control the ISO and your shutter speed with this, so you cannot control your aperture. This works pretty well, but once you move outdoors, that's when you're going to see a little difference here. And why if you like shooting at a specific frame rate you are definitely going to need a good set of filters these are my nd filters that i'm currently using they are by kenya concepts and again um if you go to that video i mentioned in the beginning i go over why i use everything still and what accessories i use but if you are outdoors and you like shooting at a certain frame rate you will need a good set of filters going back to the size of this again it is so small and so light that you can really get some creative angles with this I've been using this a little bit, trying to get some more car footage, get different angles there. 
And if you combine it, I'd say with the magic arm, you can hook it to your arm rest, or if you have some other objects you can clip it to, get a really nice angles in there. And what I'll do is I'll throw it on a suction cup on the outside of my vehicle so I can get some different shots to here and there. And with the weight of it, you really don't have to worry. I'll run a safety line, but overall, because of the weight, you don't really have to worry about sticking a huge like DSLR again or mirrorless camera or any of those other big cinema style cameras. You really only need something that is a, a good single suction cup opposed to those like the three ones or four, five, six or dedicated rig to get those vehicle shots. Now in terms of battery life with this, I did have a concern because how small it was, but honestly, it hasn't been an issue. I'll go out to say Carbon and be walking around for an hour or so not have an issue with that i have a little rig i'll go ahead and stick that there and it gives me that plv and as i said i'll be walking around for about an hour or so and i'll only go through the main battery here you do also have the option of getting one of these uh, this is the battery grip and it simply just clips into the bottom and starts charging now i found this great for maybe a little bit longer trips Again, going back into Austin, we were walking around. I forgot to charge it overnight, so I just stuck the little battery part on there and it charged it so that the main battery was 100% and just drained the bottom part. So if you are traveling and maybe you don't have access to charging all the time, pick up a few of these. They do have off-brand ones of it and you can just charge your camera on the go. So that's really nice. And again, it's a little bit bigger, but that's still super compact, you know, and it's still super late. So just note that a few little things i do want to mention with the interfacing i've noticed that for me i don't know if it's my fingers or whatever i'll be trying to like swipe over to the manual settings to get to the iso and it's just like swipe 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 and it's just not doing it also i know they did do an update but i had still noticed it a little bit i get it lens breathing or um, when it's kind of focusing trying to figure out where it wants to focus or making sure that everything still is focused it does do that a little bit so if you're wanting absolutely dialed in for that purpose just know that you could have that another little thing is if i'm ever using this as a standalone or i hook this up to my phone i will have to repair it afterwards even if those other items are turned off so there is that this has been my favorite video camera of 2024 and i highly recommend this if you're considering vlogging or if you're considering doing like desk stuff like I'm doing right here, actually works great. I'll have this with a magic arm and I'll stick it up here to get flat lay stuff on my desk. It works really well for that. I just think due to the size and how compact it is, how easy it is, the features that come with it. Something I didn't mention was like using the hyperlapse and time lapse. It works really well for that. I did some hand time lapses of our plane taking off up in the sky a little bit and landing. It worked really well for that purpose. Then also, if you wanted to, you could take a time lapse and have it do a slight movement to it. All the car scenes, you've been seeing more and more people use them to get really nice rollers. Highly recommend picking one of these up. If you are considering it, definitely go out there and get one. Get the creator combo, just alone getting the mic added into that and then having um, the case for it and of course you know the little accessories that come with it make it a more enjoyable experience when you're using it my six month review on this dji pocket 3 if you all have any questions or comments on this camera or anything that i didn't go over that you would like me to let me know down in the comment section below i really do enjoy seeing more and more engagement there and i do my best to answer everyone in a timely fashion i'm gonna wrap this up right here so as always thanks for watching and i'll see you next time